welcome to episode 5 of Read Poetry and Eventually Die. I'm your host, Steve Rogenbach. I'm here in Tucson once again. And it's clear skies once again. You know, I keep talking to my family, and my mom's like, what's the weather like there? And I'm like, it's clear and sunny and about 80-something degrees, like every day, mom. And let's get into the episode. This week, I'm talking about Stacy Teague's poetry. Stacy Teague has been around the online writing communities of which I've been part for many years. I think I remember Stacy Teague all the way back to early 2011, possibly earlier or possibly slightly later, but I feel like she was part of the community that became Alt-Lit. She was part of it before it was even referred to as Alt-Lit. And she was part of this wing of people who were like the Australia slash New Zealand team. And so very exciting for me to finally read a full-length book from Stacey Teague and get to talk about it and get to share it with other people. Now, of course, Stacey Teague has a true New Zealand accent, so I would be a fool if I didn't play a goddamn clip of Stacey Teague reading her own poetry. So this is, a, this is just a clip that I found online of Stacey Teague reading. Check it out. This is a poem called Poem in Which I Love Dick. This month I've mostly been trying to find a way to make my heart beat slower, moving through train carriages, showing my skin, frowning at men in the street. Yesterday I didn't even feel defeated. Because the city takes things from you, though nothing that you will miss, your whole self for instance. What it feels like to be crying on the upper level of a double-decker bus at seven in the morning is sometimes a nice thing to think about. Imagine sitting opposite you on a train. Imagine a beach with stones in the winter time. Now imagine having to live a whole life. I think so much about my friends and how it seems like I can never help them enough. We can never do enough for anyone. I love so many things that I am tired of. And I love Dick by Chris Krauss, she says. I want to own everything that happens to me now. To be in your own body, to be accountable, present, that came as a revelation. Somewhere I read the words, the dreaded female in a life, and thought, yes. The body is not water, and I regret ever saying so. The body has become metaphorical, only something to refer to in poems. But the body is real and underneath. Through the window I see a storm, and the rain moves the way a body might because the body moves in all kinds of ways, and the rain moves in all kinds of ways. I think of the wildness of the world and the calm that is in me. So, I read Stacy Teague's book called Takahi. Not 100% sure on the pronunciation, but I did look it up online, and at least one person said it was Takahi, and that makes sense with the pronunciation mark on it, so that's what I'm calling it, but... It's a 2014 release, so it's a pretty recent book on Scrambler Books. If you don't know Scrambler Books, maybe look them up. They've got some other great titles as well. They released a Luna Miguel book, which is great. And it's about 100 pages long. Standard poetry book size. Looks pretty standard as poetry. Some of the themes. Love is a theme. And missing people wishing that you were with someone who is currently far away. And really, what was interesting about it was that it is is sort of the positive and negative of it. And it's the being being with somebody and not being with someone. It's all there, you know. There's all these different moments, these snapshots pulled together. And it's also really interesting because of how much the speaker is focused on being with people or not being with people or being in a relationship or not or missing people or you know and there's even these moments where they where they, the speaker talks about not feeling whole without another person and then sort of self-awarely like is like but I should be able to feel whole shouldn't I like I should be able to feel whole by myself right I shouldn't need somebody else I shouldn't need a relationship to feel whole but this is how I feel, you know, and maybe I hate it, 
the book definitely deals with that topic. So if that's if that's something that you feel passionately interested in currently, then you may connect with this book. Another thing I want to discuss about the book is this really interesting topic of what writers do when they want to archive their tweets into a poetry book format. Now, the whole book is not tweets, um, but there are certain poems where I suspected that it was compiled of tweets because it's like one line just seemed like it didn't really connect that much to the previous line or the line after it, you know? Like it would jump from one topic to another topic or jump from one setting to another setting. Or I, I, I suspected these are tweets here. And I guess I'll read you an excerpt of just the first poem in the book, which is called Part One and which I suspected did this. In the morning, I'm on my laptop, and I don't even realize that outside exists yet. I am in a forest, and I forget everything else. I always have the best Harry Potter-related dreams. The thing about you and me is that we are not afraid to hurt each other. Kindness is a good place to start. Whilst talking about wisdom teeth, I think that my life doesn't feel like my own life. Home is wherever my MacBook is. I've forgotten what my favorite things are. Did you feel what I felt? That it sort of felt like it was jumping? One thing that I've liked doing as a writer who who tweets and wants to use those tweets and archive those tweets into a poetry book is that I've enjoyed making them into titles for other poems, sometimes totally unrelated poems. I think that a good tweet often works really well as a title. And then... I don't have to worry as much about how it connects to other material because I kind of like having this title that is unrelated to the rest. That's what I did mainly for my storybook that just came out. But in my book, If You Don't Love the Moon, You're an Asshole, I definitely did compile them into... I did prose blocks, and uh, Stacy did uh, separate stanzas here. And uh, I don't know. I'm just interested in... I'm interested in people's thoughts about it how do you you know how do you how do you use it how do you you know what's up you know what's up basically what's up and the other thing i want to mention before i get into reading the specific poems is that there is a d2 mighty ducks reference in the book which is very important to me there is a d2 mighty ducks reference there's also you know drake references there's a there's a there's a simone de beauvoir reference the uh, true feminist writer and there's plenty of moon content for those of you like me who love the moon there's plenty of good moon content and actually the first poem that i want to read from the book is one that definitely has this spiritual connection with nature um (laughs) which is a corny way to say it but i love this poem in the way that it it expresses you know the feeling of being in the present moment Um, This poem is called Wood Bay. It is one of those winter days where there are no clouds anywhere, and I start to imagine some sort of cosmic vacuum cleaner that makes a little slurp sound every time a cloud gets sucked up into it. I can hear it reverberating in my ears as I take off my headphones. I stand still, listening to all the different sounds a tree can make. There are no voices... Barely any human sounds at all. Now we got interrupting the poem to announce that there's a true plane flying overhead. And uh, this is a common thing in Tucson. And I don't even see it currently. Uh, we thought it would be funny when we moved here to, uh, to cheer every time that a plane flies by. Like, to never get bored of it. Because if you live here, it becomes quite a common thing. But it would be funny if you just always were excited for planes flying overhead. Uh, anyway, I get back into the poem. Uh, did I, did I ruin this poem by interrupting? We'll see, we'll see. So I stand still, listening to all the different sounds a tree can make. There are no voices, barely any human sounds at all. A dog barking, a thwack of a hammer, tree sound, shh tree sound no combination of letters to convey sound someone saying good morning and my own voice saying good morning back quiet breaths like a whisper birds flapping their wings on the water's surface far out in the distance like an echo 
Towards the horizon, the blue of the sky is so pale it is almost white. I stop to look into the harbor and I sigh and think about how nice it is to be alive and sighing and looking into the harbor. The air is so cold, but I can feel the sun on my face and I eat it up. I let the sun fill up my entire body before I exhume it all back into the atmosphere. I have never felt more aware of myself and how it feels to live inside my body. I am also aware of the lack of bodies nearby, the negative spaces that encompass me, quote, winter feelings. Right now, I am empowered by my loneliness. I am a powerhouse and all of us are and we never have to be alone ever. The trees make a sound like wisha, wisha, wisha. So I really love that poem so much, actually, for how it captures this stuff. You know, it starts out with paying attention to sounds, where you're just in the moment, listening to the sounds, you know what I'm saying? But it goes somewhere quite profound. And that's how it goes. That's how it goes when you live in the present moment. Can I get a hell yeah? Can anybody truly say aloud where you are? Hell fucking yeah. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. That was too much. That was a little much, and I'm sorry. I, I'm going to scale it back just slightly. I'm currently seeing birds on the power lines, though. So, um, This poem is titled with another New Zealand word. There's actually a Maori is maybe the language. Um, I don't know that much about it, but there is a, a f several of these words used throughout the book, and uh, there's a little index in the back with definitions, but this one is called Ruri. I say to you that I have been getting poem feelings, which is something like sitting in the passenger seat of a car alone and looking at the rain. It is listening to the same album over and over and over again. It is feeling the wind like it is a tangible object that I can mold with my fingers. It is holding my hands out in front of me like I am cupping water and thinking, I want to fit into the nook of my hand. I would like to spend my time trying to fit into all the small spaces of the world. I want to be very safe and warm. I imagine myself as a bear. I imagine myself as a little worm. I imagine myself as a living representation of the sound my bedroom door makes when you open it. I imagine you and I as a body of water. Let's go swimming in the winter time. Feeling good, feeling good. Gonna read one more poem by Stacy Teague. This poem is called Capacity. All I want to be is close to people. We do crazy things when we are lonely or in love or both. Everyone I talk to says that they are fucked romantically. What is our capacity to love? It seems impossible to know just how much love is contained inside of this body. But my guess is bloody heaps. I feel so much love for everything, including the trees and especially the trees. In an email, my friend said, I can't pretend that I think there's anything to live for apart from each other. Standing by the harbor in the cold and the sunshine, looking at the people's faces who are looking at my face and we are all smiling and there is no reason to be sad when we are all together. For your goodbye, I waited in the darkness, trying not to move so I could remember how you looked then, in the light of your phone. You talked softly so as not to wake anyone up. I hope I never forget what it felt like to be with you, and then to not be with you. The dichotomy of those things made me feel alive. I feel sad because I know I will forget one day. I will forget all of these beautiful things. But at least there will be new beautiful things to replace old things. Because summer will always turn into autumn so long as we are in this world. That is enough to be alive for. Truly profound effing poems. If you liked any of that, if that piqued your interest, then check out this book by Stacy Teague Takahi on Scrambler Books. Um, what else is there to say? I think I've said enough. I think I've said enough. And, you know, thanks for listening. And I hope I'm not obnoxious. That's just something I want to say. You know, I think I've become a lot more aware of my, uh, 
Well, I've become a lot more aware of gender in general, and so I'm thinking about, you know, a lot of times when I express excitement and uh, and and talk about like getting people pumped up and like get like yeah yeah come on you know, <laughs> I think I'm a lot of times a lot more aware of my maleness now when I'm doing that, just the way that I come off. So sometimes I feel that it sounds too obnoxious now, but it's sort of ingrained in me a little bit. So I hope I don't. I hope I'm not obnoxious as a person, but I do. I do love to share excitement about the, about things. So here we are, here we are, and I guess I'm gonna, I guess I'm gonna take off. Uh, okay, I love you. Have a good day. Bye for now.